And Sky Sports Formula One's Martin Brundle joins us now. Martin, thank you so much for your time. I know it's, it's very difficult to come on at times like this, so I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. We've seen your heartfelt tribute on social media. So tell us, first of all, as a man, what was Murray Walker like? Uh, he was a wonderful character, always so full of life and uh, full of fun and positive enthusiasm. He, you know, we all loved him in sport and in a high level sport where you are universally loved and respected and regarded. I must say, I would think is quite unusual. And because that's the kind of personality he was, he, he was so good at what he did. He had a, a passion uh, for Formula One that uh, is almost surpassed, uh, unsurpassed, I would say. So. Uh, it, it, you know, the whole of our sport will be hugely saddened by this news. And he, he never seemed to be critical of drivers at all, even if they, they made mistakes. So presumably he didn't upset any of you, the, the drivers. Did that help him be so loved by you all? No, it wasn't that. I mean, he was he would tell it the way it was. And um, but he would pull his punches because we were all in the same business and uh, and we all love fundamentally love the same sport. So um, it was just the enthusiasm with which he conveyed our sport to the fans. He was a national treasure. And of course, he was as famous for making mistakes or getting the wrong driver. And I was you know, privileged to work alongside him in the commentary box for a good number of years. And um, People even forgave him that, getting the wrong driver or just fundamentally getting getting something wrong because he carried them along with the, with this with his enthusiasm uh, for Formula One and took them on the journey and and made them feel special and feel uh, to, to feel part of of any race. And of course, you know, he commentated from uh, 1949, I believe it was, and then the, the, the Formula One World Championship started in 1950. And. He was there through all of those decades and, and and he was just totally part of the fabric. And he 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 was the voice that we all knew as kids on a Sunday night with James Hunt. We were waiting for the Grand Prix and and, and the comfortable uh, voice of Murray Walker would be explaining to us what was going on. And in terms of his commentary style, I mean, he's, he's widely known as as the voice uh, as the voice of Formula One. He didn't seem particularly to be that polished from what you're saying. Um, and there's certain Murrayisms as well. Was that just that he, he seemed more human to the viewers, perhaps? Yes, they, they, we all went along. We all went along with it. But polished he was. He was a brilliant communicator. He used to be in the advertising business originally and came up with all sorts of slogans. And I think that was his great skill of being able to broad a true broadcaster to reach out to people as if the camera and the television set didn't exist. He really uh, was able to connect with people, and so they they did as I said forgive him for for his errors. Um, but you know he he just had this innate ability to to make it sound. The, uh, he had a it was described as having a trousers on fire style of, of commentary. And, uh, you know, I used to really struggle to get a word in sometimes because he was so into his commentary uh, and, and so into to telling the story and, uh, and getting caught up in the, the events of the race. How difficult is it for you and, and others in your position to follow in his footsteps? Well, they broke the mould when Murray was born. There'll never be a, another Murray Walker. I wish he was Sir Murray Walker. I really do. And we all you know, push that from time to time. Um, um, we, yeah, he, we, I, we learned so much. You know, I always say that learning to commentate on motorsport from alongside Murray Walker for a number of years is like having Pele teach you how to kick a ball uh, or, or something like that, you know, because he was so good at it and he was so diligent and he, he went around and he talked to everybody. And then when there was no Grand Prix on, he would turn up on his motorbike, at Thruxton to watch us in a Formula 3 race to, to see the new young drivers coming along. I mean, he worked, he worked so hard at it. I spoke to him relatively recently and uh, I said, how are you, Murray? And he said, I'm not very well, to be honest, Martin, but I'm not going to bore you with that. What's going on in Formula 1? Tell me everything again, you know. And so uh, that, that was the man. And uh, so he was 97 
He was in a care home. His uh, lovely wife, Elizabeth, was in the room next door uh, eventually. She was down the corridor in the beginning and, uh, and then in the room next door. And obviously it's, uh, that was important to him, uh, particularly through the pandemic. Um, but, you know, it, it is, uh, I guess it's a good innings, I guess. Um, you know, he, he, you know, he will go up to uh, heaven and have a most spectacular grid to commentate on up there. Of course, we sadly lost to Sterling Moss recently and, and many others. So um, farewell, Murray. It was a total privilege to know you and to in some way share a part of your life and your enthusiasm. Martin, thank you very much for your time. I'm sure he would love these tributes. Thank you.